Ha. So look, now that we've outlined and described all the assumptions of the model, we can now start to think about those differences in technology that are supposed to be driving trade between countries. Those differences in technology are described by something we will call productivity table. And look, here you have one general specification and one example. Okay, so how do we read this table? Look, we have two countries in our model, EU and Kenya. Well, those are not, EU is not technically a country, but the, the, the choice of those I actually motivated by the same choices it's in your book. Uh, it will serve to show us a very important point empirically. Okay, then we are, have two sectors, so we are producing two goods, food and chemicals. Now, here is of course general specification, here is an example. The most important for us is what are those four places. Now, a is called a labor requirement. This is key. It tells us how many units of labor we need to produce. one unit of a good. So, you can think about them as the reciprocals of productivity. Well, because the more people you need to produce one unit of a good, and we are assuming that those goods are identical in both countries, the less productive are your workers. And look, those labor requirements are actually showing us the differences in technology. Because the lower is the value of this, the better the country is in producing something. And think about it, like if you require, like in this example, just two units of labor to produce one unit of food, it means that you are doing something better than another country. Kenya, which requires four people. But before we go into the example, let's, because we will be using these expressions that you see over here quite a lot, what does they mean? Look, A, of course, is a labor report. And you have superscript. Superscript is either EU or Kenya. So it tells you whether this is labor requirement EU or in Kenya. And then you have subscripts. F and C, where F means food, C means chemicals. Okay, and now look at the numbers that we've got in the table. In that table, we've got that in the European Union, in order to produce food, we need two units of labor. While in Kenya, we need four. Which means that EU is better than uh, in producing this good than Kenya. And now, chemicals, the production of one unit of chemicals in EU requires just one unit of, uh, eight units of labor, while well, in Kenya 24. So look, again we see that EU is better at producing chemicals than Kenya. Now, but there are some differences. Look, here we see that Kenya is twice less productive, it needs twice as much labor to produce uh, one unit of food, but it's three times less productive in case, in case of chemicals, which requires three times as much people. Okay, if we would look at absolute cost advantage model by Adam Smith, those two countries should not trade. Why? Because EU is better at producing both goods. It's better at producing food, it's better at producing chemicals. The 
The only trade we should see are exports from the EU going to Kenya. But in reality, we actually observe uh, a, we actually observe that those trade flows come from EU and Kenya to each other. So we clearly see that absolute cost advantage model is not able to explain this. This is why what we're going to do is to discuss comparative advantage, uh, comparative cost advantage model, and in order to understand why those two countries should actually trade with each other, uh, we should use uh, the concept of opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is something you heard about a lot, a lot of time in different classes of, of uh, opportunity cost. But in the simple, simplest terms, and those are the ones we need, is the cost of the best option. Produce 
one additional unit of chemicals, it needs to forego, it needs to give up the production of four units of food. Okay, so look, actually, it, what we learn from this simple calculation is that the cost uh, is that the cost of production, uh, the opportunity cost of producing one more unit of chemicals is higher in Kenya than in, than in EU. So, can we imagine that if those two countries could trade with each other, could they benefit from it? Look, we can imagine it in a very simple example. Look, let's just say that, that Kenya, what Kenya does is that it decides we're not going to produce one unit of chemicals. If they are not going to produce one unit of chemicals, they will be able to produce six units of food, six units of food, right? Now, what can they do? They can take the six units of food and sell it uh, in the EU. And look, in the EU, the rate going for chemicals is four. So look, in this country, we could have a, a, a reverse situation. Then, uh, EU could foregone producing four units of food and have one extra unit of chemicals. Right? So, again, what has happened over here? Kenya decides let's produce one less unit of chemicals. As a result, we got six additional units of food, but one less unit of chemicals. Over here, we've got one additional unit of chemicals, but we have four less units of food. So, what has happened to the world level of production? Look, the number of chemicals the world is producing is still the same, but number of units of food has increased by two, right? Because Kenya is producing less chemicals, more food, EU is producing more chemicals, less food. So look, we can imagine a situation that this one additional unit of chemicals would be sold to uh, uh, would be sold uh, to Kenya and let's just say for example for five units of food and then both countries would have the same chemicals as, as they had at the beginning but they both would have one more unit of food. So look, what this simple example is showing us is that not only the absolute cost matter. Look, what trade allows you to do is to, uh, is to put your resources within your country to the most productive uh, sectors, produce a lot within these sectors, sell these goods abroad and in return get things that other countries are good in producing and that look, they need, don't need to be like the best at it. Remember, simply, uh, uh, simply because, as we can see over here, productive, the uh, food production sector is twice as productive EU, in EU as in Kenya, three times as productive in terms of chemicals, this is why you can specialize in something that is far better than Kenya and Kenya can specialize uh, in what Kenya was doing. Uh, and so, so in, in food, even 
dog, technically we could do it better in a year, but we could get, get more by simply hiring more, more people to deal with chemicals. And look, this, uh, this example is showing us that thanks to what happened over here, total work production increased. And because the work production increased, now we can also expect that there will be higher welfare. Like, depends how we, on what the terms of trade will be between those two countries, but this we will, we will discuss later. Of course, the division uh, of, of this additional way of welfare will be slightly different. But the most important thing here is, is that because now we have more, in general we can say the world welfare has uh, increased. Okay, uh, so in the next video we will introduce another tool that will uh, help us capture even more conclusions coming from the model. So thank you and see you in, in, in the next video.